In one of the best ideas in years, Costco is proposing building a multifamily uh, project with affordable housing along with one of their stores in South LA, an area that needs more housing desperately. I think it's a great idea. Let's talk about that. I'm Bill Gross at Bill Gross Probate, and this is my weekly real estate market update. But before we get into specific news, let's look at the market where it is, and we'll take a quick look at the update in the news, and then we'll talk about multifamily and housing. So when we look at the real estate market, it's really critical that we look at statistics and actual data. In an economy, there's two things that determine where the market is, supply and demand. Supply is the inventory of sellers. Demand is driven by interest rates and how many buyers are interested in the property. Interest rates, again, this week closed ever slightly up 7.03%, basically slightly above 7% where they've been for a while, where they've been hanging out most of the year, where they've been hanging out for most of the last year or so. So the interest rates themselves are not changing the market. Uh, nationally. Now, these are national mortgage rates. You can get a lower rate on FHA loans and conventional, but this is the money market rate that determines the cost of money for lenders, and that basically has been unchanged. Sometimes with holidays coming up, there's some volatility, and fortunately this time around this year, we avoid that with the July 4th weekend. Now, on the inventory side, interesting, inventory is slightly declining this year, only higher than the previous years that were pandemic years. So this is the second lowest on record, if we consider last year uh, post-pandemic, but even last year, if you notice, 2023 was slightly going up at this time. And so the gap from this year to last year is declining. And so the inventory overall is slightly, slightly declining, but it's still low by historical standards. We have 570,000 homes for sale, whereas pre-pandemic, the record was 835,000 was the lowest on record then. So we still have very few homes for sale. That's what's really direct keeping prices up. As long as there's not too many houses, you cannot have prices crash. When, when economists talk about crashing housing prices, they must mean there's more sellers than buyers, so sellers drop the price to make the price go down. Now, in LA, because the local market, the market has slightly cooled off again uh, using Atlas, uh, I'm sorry, Altos Research, one of the best sources, I think. They do a very detailed analysis of the key factors and summarize it with a factor of 40. Now, it had been 41 for most of the last few months, 42 before that, 43. So the market is coming to a, it's still a slight seller's market, but it's getting slighter. It's not as intense a seller's market as it was before. And so what we see in the market is more time for offers we put together, more consideration for lower down payment, more consideration for FHA buyers. I think overall a slightly healthier market where there's more of a balance. So it's a 40, it's not a 30, it's not a 25, but it is something to pay attention to because obviously if these things continue, the market can get worse and that's where things can change. But as of right now, we would say the market is still slightly a seller's market it seems continuing. Okay, let's take a look at the news. And just amazing to me how bad the real estate industry news is. I know I talk about this every week. This become the cornerstone of my podcast. Let's look at MarketWatch. MarketWatch used to be a great source of financial source of information. And in fact, today, uh, they have an article uh, that's online. mean does that mean what and, and when you look at the article lower interest spur housing demand but with supply so tight prices have nowhere to go but up meaning it's a bad thing that rates go down because those buyers who buy houses then will watch the value of the houses go up and all the people own houses it will go up and that's a bad thing that can't get worse I, you know it just it it just amazes me now if you really want to go into the details you have to pay the money and go buy the paywall. <laughs> Don't do that. At least my recommendation is it's not worth it. But I'm just, it amazes me how it seems like they really just want people upset and then I guess are going to click on their, pay, on their w website and then pay to find out more information. Now, another article on MarketWatch, even worse, I think, is home buyers who could barely afford their homes are a hit with TikTok viewers. And so what they're saying here is, here's some entertainment. People who could barely or maybe can't really afford their homes, and you can watch them struggle financially. Not really what you should learn from them, because the people who struggled and bought, their house went up last year nationally on average 
they probably made a great investment. And rather say, learn from people who struggle because in, a, in life, all things of value require a struggle. Rather than say that, they make it sound like, oh, let's watch these people laugh at them because they struggle. And, and then on TikTok, that's the clue. That's a waste of your time. So I think really Market Watch, again, used to be a really good source of market information and financial information, but they've just become, I think, just another um, you know, clown show of real estate information that isn't going to help you, I don't think, get ahead in your business. Another one that used to be a great source of information was Yahoo, Yahoo Finance. Now the lead article is, when will the housing market crash again? Now, in my lifetime, there's been one market crash, 2008 9 That was the global financial crisis. Before that, in my parents' lifetime, 1935, 40, the Great Depression, uh, before that was like another 80 years before there was a market crash as determined by housing prices actually going down. So when's the next one going to happen? <laughs> what, they're predicting it? Uh, I, I don't think so. Um, and, and in fact, there's no information suggesting a crash. There's a lot of information saying the housing prices will struggle, may not go up as much as inflation, may not go up as much in the past, but there's nothing indicating a crash other than the headline, which is, as you know, repeat with me, designed to get you to click on the article. Another one, I think, I think a worse one, which just really shows their agenda, which is to be a political source, uh, be part of the administration, Young Finance and Housing Wire both came up on this one. Young voters are concerned about housing, but malaise may last years. And they source this from Politico. So this is Young Finance quoting Housing Wire quoting Politico. So you have all these entities working together to create this malaise, because that's a word that they believe will get people to vote for who? Well, let's see. So are young voters really concerned about housing? Is that why they're going to vote for who they're going to vote for? I don't think so. I wish. I wish people did look at inflation. I wish people did look at the lack of housing and made their decisions based on that. I don't think those are key political matters today. But when you read through the article, the evidence they support, according to Politico, <laughs> they say that it's become a big issue now because President Biden mentioned it as a priority. In a debate, <laughs> yeah, that was the headline. <laughs> the headline of the debate was President Biden mentioned housing issues. They'd be a priority if he was elected. Now, one question I would, might ask is, well, if it's going to be a priority when you're reelected, what are you waiting for? You get paid to do the job today. You're empowered today. Or if you want to show us how good you'll be, why not get started? Another question might be, well, what have you done in the last three years on housing if you recognize it's a problem? Housing has only been a problem my entire lifetime. Housing prices have gone up uh, relative to people's incomes my entire lifetime. How about what did you do while you were vice president for eight years? What did you do when you were senator for 32 years? And I'm not saying this to, to beat down on Biden. Uh, I, I don't think any politician has talked about housing other than inflation, which is destroying our economy. So here we have Politico, quoted by Housing Wire, quoted by Yahoo, telling us young people are going to vote for Biden because he mentioned in the debate. Like, yeah, young people were paying attention to that. That was the headline. That was the takeaway. He mentioned housing issues. And then on top of that, they've announced a slew of housing measures over the past year. Oh, they announced years, including a new grant program. And I've talked about these. Investing renovations and expanding, expanding housing counseling availability, which means they're going to hire more government bureaucrats to tell people who can't afford houses what they can do to hopefully afford houses. So again, to me, this just looks like a campaign piece for the Biden administration put up by Politico, repeated by Housing Wire, repeated by, by Yahoo Finance. And in all of this, again, remember the guys is young voters are concerned about housing. Well, how about young voters either, young people either are or are not buying houses? And is that good or bad? I think it's bad. I think when people own a house, they have a stake in the community. How about that? Rather than they're concerned <laughs> and that they should be relieved because the president <laughs> mentioned it during the debate. I, the idea that anybody would remember that. I saw the debate, all of it. I watched every minute of it. I'm a political science major and a student of history. I've watched every presidential debate ever. I watched the whole debate. I didn't mention, I don't remember him saying that. I, maybe he did. I didn't really notice that. Okay, under uh, continuing on bad financial advice, here's Money Magazine. Again, used to be a good source you'd go to to learn about, I used to buy issues of this to learn about how to improve my finances. 
how to improve your credit score to buy a house. And what are the answers they give you? One is check your credit report. Well, of course, because Money Magazine advertises check uh, uh, credit reporting score services on the website. They want you to buy the service from their, their uh, advertisers. Address your outstanding debt. How about have no outstanding debt? How about if you want to buy a house, don't borrow money. Don't, don't live on more than you can afford. Live on less than you can afford. Save the difference and invest that in your house. Therefore, mathematically, you shouldn't have any debt. There's no reason to have any personal debt. Maybe on a house. Maybe it's part of a business venture or real estate investment. There's no reason to have debt other than you can't afford your living expenses. And then pay down credit card debt. How about have no credit card debt? Well, they can't do that because one of their key advertisers on Money Magazine are various credit card companies and credit card shopping services. And so here's a case where uh, they are going to advertise, they're going to give you news that fits their advertisers rather than create real value for the customer. So Money Magazine has just become another one of those casualties, I think, of the industry where all we do is uh, support advertising. We don't actually support our customers. And that's not going to last in the long run. Here's another case where an, uh, a company, I think, is, is giving some bad advice to their customers. Uh, Fox News, kind of cross book alliance. Real estate rising star <laughs> points a new direction that could disrupt the entire housing market. Now, when I say rising star, uh, in this case, they're on, uh, they're, they're on the Owning Manhattan um, uh, uh, TV show on Fox, and they're, they're contributing to Fox. Part of the compensation, they don't pay them much, but they get the marketing. And so here you have, this is interesting, new direction that could disrupt the entire housing market. That direction is investing in commercial rather than residential real estate. They're encouraging consumers to invest in co commercial real estate. Commercial real estate expert, Jade Schenker, is the one who's promoting this. So she's a commercial realtor telling you that you should invest in, get it, commercial real estate, because that's gonna disrupt the housing market. <laughs> These people, they're not, they're not even subtle anymore. The, the bias and the self-serving is just not even subtle anymore. Okay, uh, one of the magazines, when I grew up, one of the great sources of news was the big three magazines, Newsweek Time and US News and World Report. Newsweek, I think, is bankrupt and came back as an online-only property. And they entered this week some lousy uh, news information with their, uh, their entry. The housing market has entered crash stage in multiple cities. It's entered crash stage in multiple cities. Now, again, nationally, we've only had two crashes in the last hundred or so years. And a crash is normally designed, de defined as housing prices dropping you know, a house sells one day for 100000 and the next day for ninety nine below, not going up at a slower rate. But when you read the article, all it talks about is there's more housing, less sales, housing prices may not continue to go up as fast. There's nothing suggesting a drop in prices, and also that there's drops in the listing prices on many of the houses. So even in the multiple cities where we're talking about the word crash, that's just to scare people. And I don't know what the purpose of it is. I guess it ultimately must be to get clicks. But there's, no, there's nothing discussed in the article that even points out that there is a crash imminent or happening anywhere. The, this is another case of they'd like to be right, and I don't know why you'd want to be right about that. Also, Newsweek, here's another example, I think, of exaggeration. California housing prices plunge up to $4,000 as insurance price steepens. Now, it's true Insurance is a challenge in California and many states. A lot of reasons why, inflation, the economy. Um, but California housing prices are not plunging. One, and if you read the article, which they, they're gonna count on you not doing, they're gonna expect to read this and then click and buy something. One house listed in wine country, California, on Zillow, cut their price by $4,000, one house, meaning it was listed, if you read the detail, for $3.098 million, didn't sell, and they cut it to $2.798 before it sold. That's just a price reduction. That doesn't mean the price went down in value. The, the seller may have bought it for $500,000. They don't even say. Oh, here you go. The public record shows it was sold for only $40,000 in 1994. So they bought it for $40,000 in 1994, and now they're trying to sell it for $2 million plus. That's not a housing plunge. Again, remember the article headline. 
California house prices plunged for $1,000. No, they didn't. It's just a lie. It's just an out and out right lie. So Newsweek, again, another dishonest source. But one of the things most disappointing when you see real estate professionals, I think, with dishonest information. Here's an example. Redfin, they have an article, newly built apartments are filling up at the slowest pace since 2020. Now, that headline is misleading because that's saying newly built housing apartments are filling up at the normal rate, no longer at the pandemic rates that have been true since 2020. We're kind of getting back to normal in apartment building. People moving into apartments, uh, maybe because they changed locations, because they wanted to work from home, whatever the reasons were. So the idea that it's filling up at slow pace since 2020, well, an explanation that that's just an adjustment to the COVID market is misleading. But it's even worse than that. Take a look at the graph. You look at this graph and go, wow, it went from the top to almost the bottom. Scary, Joe. Really scary. If I can give you a little better view on that. Oops. There you go. Right? Scary. Look at that graph from the top to the bottom. Wow. Terrible. But notice the graph goes from 30% on the bottom left, hard for you to see, up to 80%. And what that does is it compresses the data to exaggerate it, meaning you're only seeing 50% of all the range of possibilities. And so the variance is doubled and looks twice as scary as it should be. I, I, they actually offer you to download their data, so I did that and put it in my own graph. Not as pretty, but this is what the graph looks like normally. In fact, it only went up to 80 here because this goes up to 100. You can just see it's not that big of a variance. It's just not that big a deal when you go all the way down to zero. It looks like a big deal on the Redfin data because they go down to 30. But when you stretch it out down to zero, it's just not that big a deal. It looks like, hey, we had so much new apartments during the COVID period that there's a little bit of an adjustment going on. I think that's really what it is. And there's a lot of alarm that I think is false at this point. Uh, and again, why, they, why is Redfin doing that? I don't know. They just want you to read their, think of them as being the experts. But to me, almost all their articles are misleading and or exaggerated. Speaking of misleading, here's one. Business Insider, which really has, again, used to be a great source of news. I think it's just become a political rag. America has a serious, ugly home problem. Thanks to dumb rules and greedy builders, we're suddenly mired in an architectural nightmare. Now, a couple of things I would say. Greedy, uh, dumb rules, Business Insider has been a strong advocate of our current national and state administrations. So if the rules are dumb, they've been supporters of those people who've promulgated the dumb rules. You gotta own that, right? I, I don't know that's the reason why housing is ugly. That's their point. But if you're gonna make the point that homes are ugly, own the fact that you're in charge of the government and you're supporting those people, and that's why it is. Greedy builders, I, I don't know if there's any proof that builders are greedy, because there's no business, in my experience, that had more ups and downs and bankruptcies and booms and busts than builders. Yes, they make money in good times, they also go to business in bad times. It really is a wild, wild business building residential home loans. You're so interest rate de dependent. So I don't know, any. there's no evidence in the article that they're greedy, you have to pay go behind their paywall if you want to find out. But then the other part is, are people really buying ugly homes? I mean, nobody I know believes their home's ugly. They bought it because they wanted to live there. I've never had a buyer say to me, I think it's ugly, but I can afford it. I'm sure there are people who do that for rentals or for income properties. But to say we have a serious ugly home problem, I, I you know, again, I guess everybody's entitled their opinion. But I, I just don't see the point of it. And in this case, I think you know these are people who are responsible. If we have a problem, they're, they're responsible for keeping power, those people who are creating those rules. Speaking of uh, in power, it's, uh, County of Los Angeles is excited to tell you that the few people living on the streets this year, the number went from like 75, the official number, <laughs> they only count what they want to count, with like 70,000 and change to 74,000 and high change, went down less than 1%, according to the official numbers. Now, you tell me, if you drive around Los Angeles, does that look like we have less homeless people today? I, I don't see it. I, I, I just don't see that. I see more and more everywhere. I see in new places never saw before. I see whenever it's cleaned up, there's a new place of homeless people a couple blocks away at most. So I don't know. Is it getting better? I think this is a case of the government telling you don't believe your eyes 
we'll tell you what's going on. We're going to hire employees and then we'll count them up and we'll tell you that we're doing a good job so we can keep our jobs because that's really what politics has become today. I, I don't see that happening at all. Some good news. Uh, a project got approved in uh, uh, Van Nuys. Uncommon developers got a 405 unit apartment complex approved uh, despite all kinds of appeals and battles, unions battling them. This is on Sepulveda Boulevard in Venice. If you're not going to build multifamily projects on Sepulveda Boulevard in Van Nuys, in Los Angeles, where are you going to build them? Like, really, I get people don't want them in their backyard, but if your backyard's Sepulveda Boulevard, that is as big a boulevard as we have in Los Angeles going north-south, and I guess Wilshire Boulevard would be going east-west. So congratulations to uh, uncommon developers Jason Larian and Ryan Hermott uh, getting that approved. I think it's really exciting that we have another you know, exciting project being built in Los Angeles. And another proposal that actually has been out for a little bit, I just kind of caught up with this one on my own, is Costco. Costco is building and proposing an apartment complex in South LA, kind of the Windsor area, a apartment building complex of 800 units, about a quarter of them being, uh, 100 something being low income, or affordable, with a Costco right in there, with uh, courtyards, a rooftop pool, basketball court, fitness area, outdoor community night area, beautiful. Now I gotta tell you, I know people who love Costco. We don't. I'm not a member. Never have been. It just turns out that the stores just aren't convenient for us. They're just in bad locations for where I happen to live. I think I live in the epicenter of the worst spot to be a Costco member. Uh, and I know people who've moved here who are Costco members love it. My daughter and son-in-law love Costco and buy there for us from time to time. Uh, I, I read online with envy about the pizza. I used to actually buy pizza for my office. Uh, there was you know, good value. Uh, the hot dog and drink thing, I think, is a legendary. People who love, go to Costco love Costco. But I'm feeling like, why not let somebody besides politicians take the lead on this? Like, the last thing I need is another government program with a bunch of bureaucrats who've never built a house, sold a house, uh, maybe even never owned a house or rented a house, uh, devising new ways to do housing. Why not Costco? Wouldn't they want to build a project that their customers would love? Like, it seems to me, again, I've only been there a few times. We're not members. I'm always impressed with them there. It always seems clean, organized, busy. Why not let them have a shot at it? I think that's a great idea. I think the idea of companies building, you know, there used to be days where companies built cities around their factories, and we don't do that anymore for a variety of reasons. Why not have Costco have a shot at building a large project here in Los Angeles? To me, it seems like it makes a lot of sense. People can walk and get their pizza at lunch, their hot dog at dinner, buy their paper towels and everything else they need. I think it's a great idea. What do you think? So again, I'm not a Costco fanboy. Uh, I'd like to be, but they're just a little too far from me. Actually, if they built one there, Maybe I'd go to that one, that one would be closer. Okay, well that's it for this week. There's our news, uh, market's hot. I can tell you all my listings have activity, offers coming in, open houses being attended. Uh, the market still seems to be moving here in Los Angeles. What do you see? Put your comments below, like it if you like it, don't like it if you don't like it. Subscribe, comment, reach out to me, I'm Matt Bill Gross Probate. As always, make today your best day ever. Thanks so much.